I want to thank you again for joining us uh, this evening for the freshman orientation meeting. Uh, we are obviously doing it virtually. A uh, couple reasons why. One is, you know, we're trying to avoid any kind of large gatherings, you know, if we can, just as we're, we're going to practice what we preach, you know, as school gets closer to that starting date. Um, also, uh, there are still some things going on with the construction in the building and the cleaning that's going on in the building that just at this time doesn't make it practical to bring everybody into the auditorium. So uh, we, we decided that we'd, we'd hold it virtually. Um, again, this is a lot of, you know, the same technology that we're going to be, or similar technology that we're going to be utilizing uh, with some of our students this fall, those that are going to be joining us in the virtual um, platform or, you know, have selected the hybrid platform. So it's, it's a good way for you to see also how, how we're going to be doing some of the things this fall. Uh, if you have any questions, and for those of you that join later, any questions that you have, uh, you are not going, to, you're not going to be able to speak uh, with the number of people, participants we have that, that can be a little bit chaotic. So what we are going to do is go ahead and put, there's a chat feature there, put your questions if you have any in the chat feature. And I have um, one of our, our guidance counselors, um, our counselors, with us here this evening, Christina Romatowski. She will monitor. She will monitor that, and she will feed the questions to me at, at an appropriate time. Also joining us is uh, our dean of students and athletic director Jenny Vando. And uh, if you have any questions specifically for Jenny, you, you can go ahead and put them in the, that chat box as well. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do today. Uh, is I'm going to just run through a presentation that we had planned for you. Uh, I will share my screen with you. It'll just make it a little bit easier to follow. I can tell you that the, um, the meeting that we have, the Zoom meeting that we have right now is going to be, is being recorded and we will make that link available. So if you have any questions, you can review that. Um, or if you know somebody that was unable to attend the meeting tonight in, in current time, present time, uh, then they'll be able to go back and view that as well. Okay, so I'm going to start by sharing my screen and uh, Christina or Jenny, you just want to make sure that everybody has seen what I hope they've, they've seen and then we can get started. Looks good. Okay, I'm just going to hit present. All right, so again, I want to welcome the class of 2024 to the freshman orientation night. Uh, introductions, I believe you can see um, Ms. Bando. If you want to just say hi, I think you'll pop up on the screen. Hello. Hi, everybody, Mr. Bando. And um, then also uh, Ms. Romatowski, if she wants to just say something. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming tonight. So the agenda is pretty simple. I think a lot of the questions typically uh, for this, this first meeting uh, center around the schedule and making sure students read the schedule. Now, with the changes that we had to make uh, because of the COVID um, pandemic and bringing students back to school safely, there are some changes in the schedule and, and I'll go through those with you and I'll, I'll do what I can to make sure that you, you fully understand it before this meeting is over. Uh, we will also make reference to the student handbook on occasion. The link to the handbook, the full handbook can be found on the high school website. And then we'll also have some additional, additional um, information for you available. Sorry, I'm just adding a few extra people to the meeting here. Okay, so let, let's start with the schedule first of all. Um, typically what we had in the past and what we will go back to after this year is an alternating A B block, a -B block schedule where the students would have four academic blocks each day 
and our, we call it our, our resource period or, or Spartan time. And that's, that's a time where we, we provide additional supports or enrichments to students. And that's 43 minutes. Uh, with the alternating block schedule though, it did not line up well with uh, the district's plan to provide a hybrid option to our families this fall. If students selected a hybrid option and they only came every other day, they would either be always be coming on A days or always be coming on B days and they would be missing half of their schedule. So for this year, we went to what's called a four by four block schedule. The same classes that uh, you signed up for in the fall or last spring, excuse me, um, should be the same classes that you will have this year. You just won't have them all at one time. And I'll, I'll explain that in a little more detail. But that, that was part of the premise behind, behind going to the four by four block was to accommodate the district plan. Also, uh, we were also wanted to be, uh, you know, reflective of what happened last spring when we were pushed into everybody being virtual at one time. And what we heard from our students, what we heard from our parents is that students trying to take seven different classes for credit virtually at one time quickly became overwhelming. So by going to the four by four block schedule, we are, we're cutting that in half. So the students only need to focus on half of their classes at any one time. So again, for each semester, freshman students will have four classes or three classes and three classes in the study hall each semester. And they will also be scheduled for a 43 minute Spartan time each day. That Spartan time is fluid. And by that, I mean, if it's, it's meant to be a support period. Students are pretty much randomly scheduled into it to start the year. But, and, and they may be scheduled into a Spartan time for a teacher that they don't currently have. Uh, but if they need the time for additional support, what we do is we move them around in their schedule. It's very simple to do. Um, if they are doing fine in all their classes, that Spartan time really becomes additional time for them to get whatever work they need finished, finished. So it, it can be another study hall for them. One credit classes in this schedule are going to be one semester in length. So they would run from September 1st till about the middle of January. And then the second semester would be your other set of classes. Half credit classes, which would typically run one semester, this year will, want, will be one quarter in length. So that, that's a little confusing. They'll run for about 45 days um, every day for about 85 minutes. The time that the student will eat lunch, because believe it or not, when freshmen come in, this is the, one of the number one questions that we get is, how am I, when, what time am I going to eat lunch? And uh, that time is determined by who they have for a teacher third block. So on the first day, what's going to happen is all the students go to their first, their third block class at, um, at the scheduled beginning time. And when they get there, their teachers will either tell them that they have first lunch, they should go to lunch, or they'll tell them they have second lunch. And if they have second lunch, what will happen is they'll stay in that class for about 43 minutes, 44 minutes, then they go to lunch and then they go back to that class. So I'll, I'll explain that a little more as we go through the schedules. Okay. Oops, sorry, I'm gonna go back here one. Can everyone see this schedule that's up here? Christine and Jenny, is, is, is that clear? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So what you're seeing here, and, and this may not be the, what the schedule looks like as far as the format of it when it's given to your, your son or daughter or students when you receive this, uh, but this helps to explain it as far as the whole year what your schedule is going to be. So you can see on the side up at the top here, we have first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. 
And then here we have the four blocks, lunch and Spartan time. This is for a student that happens to have first lunch. So if you look at what's, let's check this. Actually, this is not the right one. This is the one I want, thank you. So uh, this is for the student that would have first lunch. So if you look at this first block, they have algebra for both first and second quarter. After the second quarter, middle of January, they are done with algebra. Second block, this person would be going to Woods class. It's another one credit. And then they have first lunch. Third block is historical global studies. That's a third credit. Then they have Spartan time. They do not receive credit for Spartan time. <clears throat> this is that support period. And then fourth block is biology. So you can see in this particular schedule, in this semester, first and second block, the student will earn one, two, three, four credits, four full credits. In the second semester, this is going to be third and fourth quarter. And you can see in this semester, they do have a study hall that's scheduled in. This one would be first block. Here they have Phi Ed, which Phi Ed 9, which lasts for a quarter. That's 0.5 credits. Health lasts for a quarter. That's 0.5 credits. Then they have their English 9 class. That's an another one credit. And Spanish 2, which is another one credit. Uh, this particular student would have Spartan time with Ms. Castell second semester. So you can see here. 0 0.5, 0 0.5 or one credit, two credits, three credits. So this student has four credits the first semester and three credits the second semester. Now the second schedule that I have here shows something very, very similar. The only difference here is it illustrates the second lunch. So here the student went to First block, algebra. Second block, woods. Third block, they went to historical global studies for the first 43 minutes. And then they go to lunch for a half hour, 30 minutes. Then they go back to historical global studies for the remainder of that class, which is about another 43 minutes. Then they go to Spartan time, biology. You can see the number of credits is still the same. One, two, three, four credits they earn for the first semester. And then they would still earn the three credits the second semester for a total of seven. Just gonna let a few more people in here. So with the academic supports that we talked about, Spartan time is probably the biggest one. Now I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest, for most students, if they're doing well, Spartan time can be, become a time when it, it's used mainly as a study hall. But it's also used for things like academic and career planning, PBIS, time for counselors to meet with students, for assemblies, for class meetings, all those things, rather than disrupting instructional time, we try to filter those things through Spartan time. We also do have some intensive study halls. Uh, this, this is done with one of our teachers. Uh, a lot of times it's for students that are really struggling, uh, in danger of failing classes, or have failed classes in the past and are looking to recover some of the credits that they may have missed. I'm going to turn over the, the next part to Ms. Bondo. And um, she, Jenny, you can just tell me when you want me to advance the slide, okay? Okay, thank you, Mr. Haas. Um, we're, this, um, this slide, just to make you aware of the non-discrimination um, policy, so that, that was the policy that was there. Um, 
So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the student attendance procedures. Um, the state of Wisconsin, we mandate, they mandate regular daily attendance. Um, and it's, it is expected for all students. As it's, it's one of the most important parts of your education is being in class because you can't totally make up um, for, if you're not there, you can't make up um, what you lost in class. So, but we do know things happen, things come up. Um, so if you are absent, um, you would need to have uh, your parent uh, call, call the office between 745 uh, and 915. Um, I'm just gonna go to Mr. Haas. For some reason it's green on my screen, so I'm just gonna go to my, okay, now I got it. Um, so again, if you're gonna be absent, just have them call um, at that time. Um, and it, absent is legally excusable for sickness, um, but um, certified by a medical doctor, but under normal, normal circumstances, you can just have a note or the parent call in. So if you wanna to go to the next slide. No, they're saying they have some trouble hearing you, just so you know. Oh, okay. I'll try to talk a little louder then. So, um, so just a little bit more about the attendance procedures. Um, so the school board excuse absences are, are listed there. So if you're, you're have an illness, mental or physical, uh, you have a attendance at a funeral, uh, an appointment with medical specialists or dentists, um, or attendance at a special event. Um, those are the board excuse absences. Um, for parent prior excuse absences, those would be ones that you know ahead of time. Um, again, those should be, uh, you can write a note, call the office, and just let us know that that's, that's going to happen. Um, it makes it easier for the student to get um, homework and, and things like that. So, um, and by law, a student may be excused by uh, a parent or, or guardian under for, for up to 10 days during the school year. Once we get past that 10 days, that's kind of when we will have to look at a truancy, some attendance, see what's going on, and if, if what we can do to, to help with the attendance. Um, and then the next slide, Mr. Haas, is um, it's, it talks about unexcused absences. So any absences from school uh, for you know any of the reasons that weren't listed, um, those would, would most likely be considered unexcused, uh, which is your truant, and that would be dealt with, you know, according to the district truancy plan and the state law requirements. And then one more slide, the next slide, Mr. Haas, is on just about uh, extracurricular uh, at your attendance. And this, I did talk about it in my code of conduct meeting, um, for those of you that are athletes and, and watch that, you must, Students must be in attendance the entire day um, in order to participate or attend uh, any extracurricular activities. So, but obviously if you have pre-excuse, if you had an appointment, um, those things would not be, uh, those would be excused and you would be able to participate. But if you're not feeling well and you don't come to like noon, you, wouldn't, you would not be able to uh, participate that day. Um, so, but again, so if it's unexcused, you wouldn't be able to practice. So it's really important to make sure um, if you have any questions on that, um, just go ahead and, and you could, would be able to give me a call about, about what your situation might be. So Mr. Haas, do you wanna add anything else to attendance? Yes, thank you. Uh, one, one of the things that I'm sure a lot of people have questions on is attendance, especially for those students that uh, may have selected a virtual or a hybrid option. And uh, one, again, one of the things that we learned last spring was that we needed to provide more of a structured setting for our students that were trying to um, learn in that, in that virtual platform. In other words, we had to make sure that kids got up and went to school. Right. So um, this year, what the school board is, is in their plan, any virtual instruction is going to be done at the same time that the regular class is meeting. So if you remember back to that schedule that I shared with you, the first class for that student started at 740. It starts at 740 regardless of that student is sitting in a desk here at the high school or if they're at home at a table 
uh, they are expected to be there at 740. And staff is going to take attendance, both, again, for the students that are sitting in front of them and the students that are joining online. Uh, it's going to be recorded in PowerSchool. Attendance is going to be recorded just as if they were here in the building. And that goes, that's same for those students that select the hybrid option. For that, those days that they're supposed to be joining virtually, we will still look for them to join the meet their class at, at the appropriate time. Um, uh, just, just so you're aware, uh, as, as uh, Ms. Bando was saying, is that if a student is not going to be in school, you would call them in. If a student is not going to be able to join that online because they feel ill, um, then you also should be calling them in. Call the office, call the attendance line, and just leave a message and say, so-and-so will not be able to attend class today. Um, even though they're on virtual, we still need that phone call. We are going to be, we are going to be keeping track of attendance. Okay, okay thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. So um, the next slide uh, talks about cell phones. Um, just kind of want to go over kind of what our policy is here. Um, so students uh, cannot use your cell phone um, or display it, display it uh, in, the, in, in the building between 7.45, well now it's 7.40, for, we forgot to change that. Um, unless you're authorized by a school personnel, and there definitely are times that, that the cell phone can be used. Um, but if it is visible by the school personnel and you didn't have authorization, the student uh, teacher would ask you to, to turn it over to them um, and for a lunch that would be determined by the, the school authority but but it would not exceed beyond the normal school day so um, so if you are you know caught having your phone and the, and the teacher asked for it just hand it over and then most likely you'll get it back at the end of the hour so um, but the next slide um, kind of talks about um, where we have uh, restricted areas where it, your cell phone can be used and where we absolutely cannot be using cell phones. So where you can use it um, would be at lunchtime. Uh, if you're in an open study hall, uh, obviously before and after school and then during your passing time. And then restricted areas would be your classroom or Spartan time or resource, um, intensive study hall and in the library. And what that means is, is it's, it's up to that teacher um, and, and on some days maybe they are going to have you use it and, and some days they're not so um, and then where we uh, absolutely no cell phones are allowed and, and that's a state law is restrooms and locker rooms so and again on the bottom it talks about if you if you do refuse to turn over the cell phone um, you know if you just you know you get you, you took it out, you didn't really realize it, but, but it was interrupting the class and, and, and your, your education. Um, and if you didn't turn it over, that would then be brought to the uh, attention of, it, of the administration. And it, it may result in suspension at that time because it's really no longer about the cell phone at that point, that would be about, about defiance. Just, just one thing I'd like to add to this, Jenny, um, for the eighth grade, well, Students coming from eighth grade into the high school. You probably had a similar policy at the middle school. How do you know when you can use your cell phones and when you can't use your cell phones in these restricted area where it may change from time to time? So what, what our staff members do is they have a sign in their room and it's, it's red on one side and it's green on the other side. And if they are going to allow you to use your cell phone at any time, they'll flip that paper over so that you can see the green sign. Kind of like a stoplight, you know, green, go, green, yes, red, no. All right, so just what you should do is condition yourself, you know, before you look, pull out your cell phone, you know, look for that sign. Also, just because it's green, uh, when we're talking about cell phone use is permitted, we're talking about appropriate cell phone use is permitted. So, you know, there, there are still some things that we do not want you using your cell phone for, uh, even during the times when you might have the green sign up in the classroom. Okay, the, the next um, slide that I have here, uh, unfortunately, this is something that has become 
part of our, our planning this year, and that's the, the wearing of a mask. I think everyone knows that uh, per Governor Evers order, masks are required in the school and on buses inside of any public places, at least until September 28th. That's when the current order is set to expire. We don't know if it'll be extended. We don't know if, um, you know, it'll be, uh, if it'll end early. Uh, but right now, if you're on the school bus or if you're in the building, you are expected to wear a mask. If the order does expire, there is still times when you are going to be required to wear a mask in the high school. And this is, is consistent with the district plan. The high school plan goes to the board tomorrow night for approval, all the building plans do. But our plans are consistent with what's, what the high school has stated, or excuse me, what the district has stated in their plan. So future mask requirements, if the order is allowed to expire, all students will still wear a mask on the bus and entering the building. The reason for that are those, that's times when it's very difficult um, to provide that social distancing and the spacing that we need. Anytime there's any kind of transition where there's a lot of kids moving around in, the, in one area at a time, we're going to require that they wear a mask. And, and it, I should say proper wearing of a mask. That means it should cover their nose, their mouth, and it should be a, an approved mask, um, which also should be consistent with the dress code. In other words, you can't have anything, just anything on your mask. It's gotta be school appropriate. All students and staff went inside the classroom and we are unable to properly social distance. And by that, I mean six feet apart and there is no barrier in place. So uh, in the future, if you're in a classroom and you're within six feet of one other student while you're in there and you're, you're receiving your instruction, if there is not a barrier between you and any other students, you will be required to wear a mask at that time. Uh, every classroom is going to be a little bit different because every classroom is a little bit different size. So we can't, we can't set a number and say, you know, 10 kids wear a mask. It depends on the size of the room, depends on the layout of the room. So uh, it will probably have something very similar to the cell phone policy, you know, green and red. Uh, when you need to wear a mask, it'll be red. You know, when you don't need to wear a mask, it'll be green. Uh, but those are things that right now are, are in place for, for the future. All students and staff will also wear a mask outside of the classroom. That means in hallways, common areas, restrooms, and office areas. Um, I think most of us probably saw the one video uh, that went viral. I think it was a Georgia high school uh, where somebody took a video and most of the kids were all packed in the hallway. Nobody was wearing a mask. Um, if, if you're going to be in the hallway, it's going to be expected that you wear a mask. Also, all visitors entering the building will be required to wear a mask. Okay, um, just a few more things I, I need to cover. Um, open campus during uh, lunch hour. I think this is one of the things that our freshmen always look forward to. Um, so presently we do have an open campus, which means at your lunch hour, you are able to leave the building and you can uh, go over to McDonald's, Subway, um, IGA, um, wh wherever you can get to within the time, the 30 minutes. Um, there, just remember that this is a privilege and not a right. Um, if we uh, ever have problems and it becomes an issue, we can always remove this uh, policy. So just a few things. You are expected to use the defined crosswalks um, outside when, get, when going over to those areas. Um, students are not allowed in any vehicles at any time. Um, so if a friend couldn't uh, come and pick you up and, and take you down to, to Subway or whatever, um, there's just, you're not allowed to be in a, in a vehicle at any time during, during lunch or, or during the school day for them, unless if you're getting picked up by a parent, obviously. Um, 
Uh, you are to leave through the gymnasium entrance, the new gymnasium entrance on the west side of the school. And then you would re-enter through the cafeteria doors. Um, and then you would remain in the cafeteria until the bell rings um, on that west side uh, during lunch. So that's a little bit about lunch. Um, so the next slide um, kind of it talks about student behavior. We're, we're you know we're expected to have good good behavior at all all times, but we all we all know we sometimes have bad days and and uh, sometimes aren't ourselves. Um, but we want to make sure we're demonstrating respect for, for authority and respect for your your class your classmates. Um, so, but um, personal or property rights violations may result in disciplinary actions, suspension, expulsion, criminal charges, or a combination of, of those consequences. So the next slide um, talks about if, if you know, we have one of those bad days and we happen to make a bad decision, um, you, you may be assigned a detention by a, a teacher or a staff member. It doesn't have to be a teacher, it could be a staff member. Um, so what happens at detention is if, if you're given a detention, that staff member would let you know, um, and then you would serve that detention during your next scheduled lunch period. Um, so if you happen to get it first first hour, first block of the day, you would serve it that day, but if you got it after lunch on a Monday, then you would serve it on Tuesday the next day. Um, and the detention is in Mr. Meyer's room, and, and you'll, you'll, be, you'll get acquainted with what rooms are which. Um, if you uh, miss a detention, then you, your detention would double. Um, and if you continue to, to, to not show up, we would we'd definitely be having a, a, a chat about maybe some additional discipline or see what's, what's going on if you just help need a reminder. Um, but, um, and Mrs. Dart is very good at reminding. So she, she's pretty good at letting you know. If you don't know who Mrs. Dart is, you soon will know who Mrs. Dart is. So, um, and I believe that's, um, all I have on, on my slides. Ms. Bondo, um, yep. are parents going to be notified of a student's detention? Um, our, I think our policy right now is, is yes. If, um, if they do receive detention, um, that they are supposed to notify the parent. That, that's correct. Okay. Okay, the next slide here um, talks about graduation requirements. Uh, I know that, you know, coming in, uh, you, you went, probably went through this last spring when you were picking your first set of classes, but, but for your four years of high school attendance, you are required to have four credits of English. You need three credits of social studies, and one of those credits has to include U.S. history or AP U.S. history and another half of a credit needs to involve civics or take, it needs to be civics. The civics class is taken by our juniors and they also take the, the civics test at that time too, which is another state requirement that all, all students have to take before they graduate. Uh, you also need three credits in science, including a minimum of one credit of biology you will take biology your freshman year. And then you also need to take, you need to take 0.5 credits of physics and 0.5 credits of chemistry. Now that can be a little confusing because there's a couple different ways that you could meet those requirements. Uh, if you, obviously if you take biology, physics and chemistry, you have the requirements met. But you could also take biology Physical Science 1, which would meet your chemistry requirement, and Physical Science 2, which would meet your physics requirement. So you can meet these requirements in two years, and then you would just need an additional science credit somewhere to meet the three credit um, total. You also need three credits in math mathematics. You need 0.5 credits in health. 1.5 credits of physical education, 0.5 credits of personal finance, and then you also need additional elective credits uh, to meet the 27 total, which is the graduation, current graduation requirement. 
in addition to the 27 credits for graduation, you also need 20 community service hours. And um, you'll get more information and details on that in, in one of your Spartan times as we go through that. But think about it, it's, it's about, it's, most people do about five, five hours a year is, is what we're asking people to complete. Some other things to know, uh, just as you're planning out your, your next four years, uh, if you're looking at which classes to take and you're planning on going to a four-year university, top schools, what they really want to see is they want to see students that have taken a highly rigorous schedule with upper level courses such as AP classes, Start College Now classes, CAP classes, and CCIHS classes. Those are, those are classes that are offered through UW Oshkosh and UWGV. Um, that's what universities are looking for. They wanna see that you can take these upper level classes and you can be successful in those courses. Tech courses or tech schools like NWTC are also expecting you know, higher levels of math and English proficiency than ever before. <clears throat> if you're taking, if you're planning on taking Start College Now courses, those are NWTC courses that you can take while you're in high school. Uh, just know that you have to meet the prerequisites of those courses in order to take them. So what that means is what you do as a freshman and a sophomore are very important. So you have these options available to you when you get to your junior and senior years. Same thing with youth apprenticeship. Opportunities for junior and senior students. <clears throat> Excuse me. These students that are on track for graduation and have done everything they need to do their freshman and sophomore years. As a junior, you can take two credits of youth apprenticeship, up to two credits. That means you get to leave school for two blocks, go somewhere, in a, a pre-approved work experience environment, something that we hope is consistent with your career path or at least the skills that are important to your career path, and you can earn credit and get paid at the same time. So that's, that's something that's very appealing uh, to, to many of our students. Your senior year, you can take up to four credits of youth apprenticeship. We have some students that only come to school every other day because the other day they are, they are at work uh, completing their youth apprenticeship requirements. And again, as I said before, getting paid to do it. So those are some options that, that you wanna make sure that you keep open. Again, th this last, last slide here, I think this is just something that we we want to tell students on, you know, before they start, because it's always better to stay ahead of things rather than fall behind and try and catch up. Um, when you are a student of LC High School in the LC School District, you are always rep a representative of LC. So what you do, um, if you're in co-curricular activities, always reflects on LC School District, and we, we have very high standards. So. Um, you know, just keep that in mind. Also, grades count. You know, in elementary school, in middle school, you were encouraged to do your best. Many of you put in a lot of work and, and you take your grades very, very seriously. Uh, at the high school level, if you do not take your coursework seriously, if you do not pass classes, you become credit deficient. Most of our students earn seven credits a year. You need 27 to graduate. So four times seven is 28. It doesn't give you a whole lot of room to not do your best in some of the classes that you, ha that you have. With that said, how, do you be how are you successful? You use your teachers to help you. If you have questions, make sure you, you ask them. If you need additional support, make sure you ask them. We have a lot of structures in place to provide students with that support. Get involved while you're here. You know, I, I say get involved in a time when, when unfortunately a lot of our activities have been canceled because of the COVID pandemic. Um, but do what you can to get involved. You know, this, 
the, the, the pandemic isn't going to last forever. You know, when, when we can start up activities, I know some of the summer activities were very well attended. Take advantage of those opportunities. The more you're involved, the more you're looking forward to coming to school, the more successful you're going to be. And remember, decisions now dictate your options and options in the future. Your success in core classes, the math, English, science, social studies, are going to lead to other opportunities as you get older, as you be, hit those junior and senior years, things like early release, other elective courses, start college now, youth apprenticeship, and, and then eventually scholarships if you're looking on to going on to uh, another um, higher level of education. So just a note to parents, um, you know, it's been shown that some of the top five influences on student, a student's high school academic success um, is attendance. You know, I think that's why, you know, we talked earlier about even for those students that are choosing virtual or a hybrid, we are going to take attendance. We, we want that structure. We want students to tune in every day when they're supposed to. Teacher quality. We do our best at LC High School, at the LC District, to not only hire good teachers, but once we have teachers hired, we put a lot of effort into providing professional development for our staff. Uh, you know, I think if you talk to teachers in our district and you talk to teachers in other districts, there's very little comparison most times in the amount of opportunities we provide our teachers to get better at what they do. Curriculum, student ability, and effort, another key influence. Home support and co-curricular involvement. So again, it's important, connect with the staff, connect with the teachers. Parents, if you have questions, reach out to your teachers, reach out to your son or daughter's teachers. You know, if you have questions, ask them. Make, you know, if you need a phone call, let them know, they'll make a phone call. Uh, connect with your student daily, ask them how things are going. Um, and don't settle for the one word response. You know, ask them to give you a little bit of detail. You know, the, more, the more that interest that we can show in, in our sons or daughters, how they're doing in school, the more effort they, they put forward. So with that said, here are some people, students that can help you when you're in school or even if you are online, uh, joining us virtually, reach out to your teachers, reach out to the counselors, Mr. Geisler, Ms. Romatowski, Dean of Students, Ms. Bondo. You can contact and email me. I do have students emailing me, actually some of them quite often. Um, it's okay, if you got a question and you need an answer, that's fine. Officer Dubois, office staff, school nurse, coaches and advisors. Really, what we want you to do is if, if you feel that you need something, reach out to somebody, reach out to an adult. Doesn't really matter who it is. Everyone here is here to help you and they will make sure that they connect you with, with the right people. So before we get to any of the questions that are there, I just want to uh, bring up a couple important dates here. I know we've been getting a lot of questions about open house especially with the construction, people are curious, you know, things have changed. So even if you've been in the building as, you know, middle school students, um, things are different. So you want to walk your schedule, you want to make sure you can get your lockers open, we understand that. Uh, the reason we were reluctant at first to, to set a date on this is because we really didn't know how the construction was going to go and, and the cleaning that follows it. Um, I did talk to our head custodian today and he assured me that by Thursday next week, um, the, the hallways, at least the hallways will be cleared and waxed so that you can walk through and get to find your lockers and find your classrooms. I can tell you that for the open house, teachers will not be available that day. Um, they, have, they have a full day of in-service, um, but the building will be open. Uh, there will be some people here to help guide you around. Hopefully we can get a a good map uh, made. We're, we're kind of working on that right now so that you have something to follow on that day. Um, but if you want to come in, um, you'll be able to do that on August 27th. That's next Thursday between three and six. 
on Tuesday, September 1st is the first day of school. And there will be more communication going out, especially for those students that are have chosen the hybrid option or the virtual option. Monday, September 7th is the first day of football, boys soccer, girls volleyball. Um, note in here is to make sure you complete the online registration, watch online code of conduct meeting and turn in any physical and alternate year forms. You're not going to be able to start the practice if you don't have those forms in. So make sure that you get that stuff taken care of. Okay, I know that that's a lot thrown at you, um, but uh, Ms. Romatowski, are, are there any common themes in the in the comments that you've seen that questions that I could possibly elaborate on? When do you think um, students would have access to their schedules? Okay, um, that's a good question. Because, because we had to go from the alternating AB block schedule to the four by four schedule, there were some courses that we had to shift. For most freshmen, it didn't really, it, it didn't involve you much, but for the overall schedule, it did. For example, we had to push all the AP classes into first semester, which means we had to move other classes to make room into second semester. And when we did that, we had to go back and we have to go back and by we, I mean our counselors, they, they, they're the ones that take on the brunt of the work. Uh, they have to go back in and hand schedule all those students that they moved. So that takes a little bit of time. Um, we are hoping that the schedules will be done early part of mid part of next week, hopefully. Um, I will send out a communication. Uh, we, we will put something out in email. We'll message it out, you know, when the schedules are available. And then students will be able to go um, online and, and and look up using their, their information and look up their schedules online. Ms. Romatowski? Um, I'm waiting. I'm not sure if there's any other questions because I think you answered a lot of them as you went through. Okay. Um, and then open house, do you know if, um, I believe middle school is at the same time. Do you know that? I did talk to house? Mr. Chandler today. Um, I can, he did schedule it at the same time. His structure uh, may be a little bit different though. I'm not sure if he's, he's, he's having staff members there or not. Um, I would say for the high school students, um, as, as freshmen coming in, because we are going to require people that come in, um, it, it's under the order. If you come into open house, you are, you are going to need to wear a mask. You know, and we're going to ask that you do your best, you know, to, to social distance. You know, it's kind of like going to, to Menards or Fleet Farm, right? They tell you to keep your distance, you know, between somebody. Uh, we're, we're going to ask that you do that. Uh, but for those reasons, freshmen coming in, even though I know you're going to be curious as to what the new middle school looks like, we're going to ask you to stick to the high school part because the middle school open house is really for the middle school. There, there will be a day when when you can go through and you can check out the new middle school. That, that day will be coming. Uh, the district will have something planned. Okay. Um, and then do you know when Chromebooks may be available for students? Uh, open house, the freshman students will be able to, will be able to pick up their Chromebooks. Okay. So and that then, means between three and six. Okay. And I had a question about biking to school, but I'm not quite sure um, what the individual was asking. Um, you, so I've just asked them to maybe well, clarify no, that. that. That's a good question. <laughs> I know that, I know that um, we probably need to have out someplace and, I, and, and I'm thinking into construction right now, I have not seen a place where we have bike racks. So uh, that's, some, that's a good question. I will, I will have to look into that. Okay. Um, Oh, if, if we have selected that they need a bus, can they still bike to school, maybe on good days, nice weather? Oh, yes, definitely. Take advantage of the nice weather, definitely. Um, Ms. Bondo, do you know the date of the um, physical extension cutoff? Um, that will, it, it, I guess I'm... I'm not really sure what the what 
date they're talking about. Is it the, if they had one in the 2018, they can, they can extend it through this school year. So I guess I, I don't know what the date is. Um, yeah, I don't, and if that person just wants to send me an email, that might be easier because um, then I can, I can see what the date of their physical was and, and, and when, if that extension applies to them. Okay. Okay. And um, any idea when they may find out about their locker location that's usually on their schedule? But Yeah, the, the locker location, when the schedule is available, um, the locker location number and the combination is all on there. The, again, the only thing in the classes will be on there, the room numbers, the teachers, the only thing that's not going to be on their schedule is their lunch hour. And again, that, that's where they will have to go to their third block class first on the first day of school. And their teacher will tell them if they have first lunch or second lunch. Okay. Um, Ms. Bondo, do you know, too, um, someone was looking for a cross-country update, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not, um, I can kind of tell them what I know. Cross-country started Monday, uh, practice, um, and so far they're going. I know everyone's seen different things each day. Um, it's a fluid situation. We are proceeding forward. We're currently finalizing a schedule. The schedule is going to look different. Um, the meets will look different, but as of now, high school, cross country, and, and all of our sports are planning on going forward. But again, I, I'm not going to say a definite on anything because like I said, every day something happens. So, Okay. Um, and then Mr. Haas, how is the high school dealing with open enrollment? Um, will the open in-person spots left by virtual choice kids be filled by other district kids transferring in? Um, with the open enrollment question, the district is looking at that. Uh, right now, what the district is doing is, is they are, people are, are, I guess, able to fill in an application, but the district and the board has to decide how, they, how they're going to handle those. Um, I can tell you that we are very much aware that students who are signed up for virtual this semester or a hybrid model this semester may very well become make a choice to come back five days a week next semester. So we as a district can't paint ourselves into a corner. Um, you know, if, if everybody comes back, we, we have we have to make sure that we have the staff and, and the capabilities to to handle that. But um, it, no, that that's a question, I, and I believe it's it's on the board agenda for for tomorrow's meeting. Okay, um, and then um, some parents are concerned about when we go to this um, four by four block and they take their academics in the first semester, but we have state testing maybe in the second half of the year, mm -hmm. you know, and they may forget things, you know, just some concerns about that. Yeah, that, that, is, that is one of the drawbacks of a four by four schedule is, is you do end up with these, these chunks of time between, for example, math classes or, or language arts classes. Uh, that is one of the drawbacks. And, and that's why when we decided to go to a block schedule several years ago, we selected an alternating AB schedule instead of the four by four block. Other schools do run a four by four block or a trimester, so it's something very similar. Uh, you know, the, um, the regression factor isn't well, between when the semester ends and when it begins isn't that significant. Um, you know, it's more what we're looking at is from the end of the first semester to the beginning of the next year. The testing, the testing, um, we, we want our students to do the best that they can on the testing, but this is, this is for everyone around the state. Um, this is around the country. These are, you know, not common or typical times. So um, I think that everybody understands that there's going to be some uncertainty with the testing components. I don't know if I answered the question. It's just, it's just one of those things that uh, we, when we balanced everything out, we felt that 
it's better to provide students a non-fragmented um, instruction and, yep. and ensure learning initially rather than you know, trying to make the best of a bad situation. Yeah. And if anybody is in maybe AP human geography, um, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, and, and they're interested in taking the AP exam, do you have any suggestions for that? Sure. The, the AP classes, because the, the AP exams are a little bit different than the state testing. The AP exams, uh, you know, those, those students are taking because they are trying to earn college credit and they are also paying for those exams. So, you know, I understand parents have to, under, have to decide, am I going to pay $90 or whatever it is for my son or daughter to take the exam? Uh, the way that we're trying to fill that gap between when the class ends and when the exam begins is by through Spartan time. So we have a rotation of AP classes that will continue to meet from the end of the first semester all the way up to the testing dates. And the teachers will meet with their AP students, continue to meet with their AP students during Spartan time and uh, review past concepts that were learned, reinforce them, expand on some of them so that when they get to the AP test, if, if anything, we hope that they're going to be more prepared than what they have been in the past. Now, I, I did also read something today that AP is also looking at different options um, to address, address this because there are many, school, many schools around the country that have gone to the four by four. And, and they, you know, they're, they're um, entertaining different ideas about how to test these students as well. Jenny, um, just back to cross country, do you know anything about middle school and you know, maybe athletics there and cross country there? Um, so they met last week uh, with the league they play in and they are, all the schools need to have a decision by the 20th. Um, so they, they're waiting on to see what all other schools are doing. But again, our, our board has approved for us to move forward, but it may look different just due to um, how many schools are going to be offering it for middle school. But there's also other logistics such as busing and transportation because um, we have to probably have less people on the bus, so we're, we're just taking a look at all those options. But Mr. Chandler will get that information out um, as soon as that's determined. Okay. Um, Mr. Haas, do you have any idea about class sizes? I think especially since we may have some virtual students. And right. right. So right now I'm going through and looking at the scheduling that we had. Most of our classes, all, all of our classes, um, currently right now are less than 30 and the majority of them are less than 24 and many of them are less than 20. Uh, so what I do not have yet is a final list of the students that we have that chose virtual uh, and specifically in which classes they are or um, a breakdown of which ones are taking the hybrid and will be on here on one day versus the other day. So until I, until I have those lists, um, you know, I can't give you an exact number for any class. And obviously every class is gonna be a little different. I can tell you that uh, for our teachers, what they are going to do is they're going to take their classrooms uh, now that they can finally get back into their classrooms. And um, they're going to set them up in a way that maximizes spacing between each student. And they're going to figure out what's the maximum number of students they can have in there. Um, and again, I'm, I'm going back to our future plan before they would be required to wear a mask. And we're also looking at, at ways to pro provide barriers between them. Um, so um, to answer the question again, right now the, the students that are open enrolling haven't factored into any of the equations because none of those students have actually been accepted. Um, I, I shouldn't say none of them. Some, some students open enroll every year and some of them were accepted in the, in the early open enrollment periods. But I have not seen a huge flood of students into the high school that have been accepted for open enrollment. Okay. Um, and then we have some folks concerned if they don't have their schedules, it makes it difficult to shop for school supplies. Um, you know, and each teacher, even if there's 
teaching the same class has maybe some different preferences? Can you address that? Um, the, the classes, the schedule that you have, let me back up here. Last spring with the report cards, um, all students and, and even eighth grade students, uh, incoming freshmen, were given a list of the classes that they were signed up for. So if that was the list, if that, those are the classes that were on your list, you will have those classes either first semester or second semester. Uh, most of our teachers only have, teach the one class. So example, if you have algebra, you have Miss Journey. She's the only one that teaches it. Whatever she has in the school supply list, you should get. Miss Costello is the only one that teaches English 9. So th those, th that's what you should get. Um, I guess the question would be, you know, who are the freshman teachers? Um, I can, I can, you know, Miss Journey, Miss Castell, uh, your biology teachers, Miss Kohanic and Miss Stoddard are all going to request the same things. So I, I, I would say just look at the courses that you were signed up for and we will do our, our very best to get those schedules out to students as soon as we can. But again, the switch, the switch from the alternating AD to the four by four block has put us back, you know, not just a couple of weeks, has put us back over a month, you know, behind where we want to be. So and you know, just for some that may be struggling, like, you know, they're just worried they may not have what they need. Um, our teachers we all understand, I think, the difficult situation that everyone has been put in. Um, and so please, I guess, try not to um, get stressed out or be anxious about coming the first day of school and not having what you need. Um, the first several days are going to be just kind of going through policies and procedures. And if you're really struggling to find something that maybe somebody has requested for a class, just let that teacher know. Um, you know, because we're all kind of in the same boat. So um, I, there's a lot of things to stress about and that just shouldn't have to be one of them. So. Thank you. Um, what time is student pick up and drop off, drop off for parents and do you know how parking will work this year? Um, okay, uh, a lot of this stuff is going to be part of, is, is part of the district plan and some of the stuff that the questions, the details will be part of the high school plan that I'll, I'll share out eventually. Uh, but I don't wanna get into too much detail until the school board actually approves the plan. Uh, the district plan though, um, said that the buildings will not be open until 725. So the, the buildings are going to be locked until 725. So don't drop them off before 725 is, I guess, my advice. Um, class starts at 740. So you'll still have 15 minutes. As far as parking goes or drop off, I'm, I'm not sure if they meant parking or drop off. Um, high school drop off. If you're getting dropped off, you should get dropped off in the east parking lot, which is the IGA side. Um, you can just drive up there and, and you, know, you enter on that side of the building. If you are riding with a young, older brother or sister to school, they would be parking in the sports complex. They would be coming in the west doors by the new gymnasium. Um, and hopefully everybody, if you had questions about the school supply list, Ms. Bondo put the link. It's also on the high school website towards the very bottom um, if you're looking for the school supply list. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions out there? Okay, well, um, again, there, there is a recording for this and, and we will be sharing a link out. If you have other questions, uh, by all means, please contact the office. And, and like I said, the school board will be looking at our, our building COVID plan tomorrow and reviewing that and hopefully they, they'll have that approved. I will tell you that whenever we're talking about anything related to COVID, um, 
a lot of that stuff is very fluid and we have to adjust as, as we get more information and details. So, so just be aware of that as well. But at least that, that would be the most current information that we have to share with you. So again, thank you very much. We will do our best to make sure that those schedules are available to you. And we hope to see everybody uh, on August 27th for the open house. Thank you. Mr. Haas, looks like one last question about lacquer access at open house. Oh, sure. <laughs> Yep, you'll be able to, you'll be able to walk your schedules, and if you have stuff that you want to put in your lockers on that day, that's fine. Uh, definitely. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone.